We have a population here in Little Falls of about 9,000 residents. Beautiful downtown area, beautiful parks, you know, right on the Mississippi. You just can't have a better community than what we have for sure. It's still small town America. Everyone knows everyone. Just kind of a, a peaceful place. You know, it's a tight-knit community that when something happens, it affects all of the community. I was in meetings, and when I stood up and said, well, we have 100,000 pills coming out of our pharmacy every month in a county with 30,000 people, and I'm like, people are like, oh my gosh, that's terrible. But then I thought, you know what? Every community has to have this problem. There's opioids everywhere. When I was working patrol, driving around in a squad car, in all the interviews I've done, I haven't found the one person who just I'm going to try heroin and shot it in their arm. All of them have started with pills. The real red flag is when our undercover detectives and law enforcement in the community were pulling garbage bags full of prescription narcotics out of drug dealers' homes, and we knew our name is on a lot of those medications. I was 18, and I was on my way to school one day, and I got in a car accident. And was put in a cast and was put on painkillers because it hurt. I never imagined that wrecking a car would, would lead me to being an addict and to living the life that I was living. I thought that, you know, the pill addiction was bad. I mean, that was just child's play to my heroin addiction. Everybody in our community is affected in some way, whether it's a cousin, a family member, a neighbor. Everyone knows somebody who is either addicted or has that potential to be addicted. Travis is our grandson, but he kind of became like our son. And uh, he was silly, funny. He loved life, he really did. He enjoyed everything. He should have had a chance to grow up. He should have had a chance to and not die of heroin. Something so terrible like that. Well, the thing of it is, it, it kind of sneaks up on you gradually. It isn't like something that one day everything's fine, the next day it's it just every day a little bit. You think, oh, we'll get through this, we'll get through this. All of a sudden you find you can't. It's not fair. He was only 22. It has to stop and it. They have to go be helped. It's not going to stop otherwise. Kids will keep dying all the time. The overdoses, the deaths, the amount of scripts that were leaving us, um, the number of narcotics that were being found on the street, it was more the community came together to say, we have to fix this. Let's start tightening up and changing our policies and procedures in the clinic and our prescribing habits. The Morrison County Rural Opioid Program is a program where every member of our community really comes together. So not just our clinic, but our law enforcement, our schools, our pharmacy, social services. So everybody needs to kind of understand that there is this problem, there's different ways to handle the problem, and that everybody needs to get on the same page. But you gotta start somewhere. You have to shut the faucet off of the overprescribing to prevent future generations from getting addicted. On any given month, there's over 100,000 narcotic pills in our community being dispensed by our pharmacies. Three pills for every person. So we knew we had an exorbitant amount of meds leaving our clinic. We found many, many patients who were taking narcotics for diagnosis that really did not need narcotics. And so we had a lot of heart-to-heart -heart conversations with physicians on what they were doing and what they were prescribing and trying to convince them of the dangers of some of the things that we have been doing. And I think most of our physicians weren't aware that there was that type of problem. They were giving prescriptions to people and they were walking out and selling them. They really have no idea what happens once those get outside the doors of the pharmacy. So that's where law enforcement comes into play and go, hey, this is what we're seeing out on the street. These are where your prescriptions are ending up because we see it firsthand. But we're trying to stop it. So we got to bring that information back to the clinical settings. Rather than just throwing these people in jail, they call us to try to get them help. 
Our pharmacy, if they notice some weird prescribing habits, call us and say, hey, let's address this patient. We have ability to see who's prescribing. We have the ability to see which pharmacy they're going to. We can tell whether they're telling us the truth or not because we have ways to legally check to see if they've been using other names or other communities. And so we started getting more interactive with other pharmacies and saying, we need you on board. We can't have a weak link here in town. We need everybody on the same page or this isn't gonna work. That's what we've done here locally, and it's really been pretty much a key to accountability. As research has kind of developed, we've started to learn as physicians that there are other ways to handle pain besides just prescription opioids. Things that don't involve addiction, things like physical therapy, pain clinics where they might do injections of some type exercising, whether it's losing weight. There's so many other ways that we can address pain to improve the pain. We're trying to get that message out to community to, to show them that there are options rather than prescription opioids. And if you are on them and you have a problem, we can help with that as well too. And now we've started to also branch into education, whether it's prevention through our schools, um, giving high school forums to teach the youth about the risks of uh, drug use. I think about our community and this whole process of what we've done with this drug task force. And it's just been very helpful in awareness, in education, in uh, cutting back on the abuse of drugs, and just helping people to live a better life. The one thing that I always go back to to know that this program is working is when we have a new heroin patient who comes into our clinic and says, it is impossible to find prescription opioids on the streets in Little Falls. We're seeing positive effects now because we're limiting the medications going out there right now. We've done this in one of the poorest counties in Minnesota, and we've created this collaboration within a community, and we've had a ton of success. We've been able to do it in a relatively short amount of time. It's scalable, it's completely doable, it's not an insurmountable mountain, and that all of us as a clinic are on board with that. It can't just be one or two physicians. It has to be the entire mentality and culture of that clinic. We have some people that are doing really well who had no lives you know, a year ago. And for us, success is really them getting back with their families and, uh, and staying sober. You really, I think, make an impact on people's lives and you, and you do save lives it's in a different way. Everybody needs to feel like they can get help and not be judged and have it be through people that care about you. And every single person deserves to live drug-free and be happy. We're helping the most vulnerable people in our community. So I think at a very high level, it's delivering our mission, you know, helping change the health of our community. When I see patients receive that care right here in Little Falls, Minnesota, and ending suffering, which is our mission as a Catholic health system, it's just, it's the human component that is the proudest moment that we share.